If you love movies and movie discussions, you've come to the right place. Who am I, you ask? I am the Wiz. Now, I want to start off uh, before I do this. I just got past a cold, so if my voice sounds different, it sounds, uh, I guess, raspier. That's why. So, I am doing the recap for the Star Trek movies, which I'm going to call To Boldly Watch. And I want to start off with what my thoughts of the film series or the series itself before I start watching the movies. And that is basically that I thought Star Trek was not for me. I would see things about the series and I would look at it and it would feel kind of corny. It honestly felt kind of lame. And then on top of that, I'll be honest too, the few people I knew that were Trekkies were like really Trekkies and they were kind of scared me at times. It was like, Jesus, <laughs> it's like, what's wrong with you? But then again, Star Wars people are kind of the same way. But I think Star Wars is a more accepted sci-fi when it comes to uh, mass audiences. I think more people are willing to watch a Star Wars movie than they are a Star Trek movie. But I, I was looking at which type of series I wanted to do, and I thought, why not with Star Trek? I, I should give this a shot, since I did actually enjoy the reboot series that they did. So I thought I would give this a shot. Before I get to my favorite Star Trek films... I thought I'd go over certain things about the Star Trek movies. One of the most important things that a lot of Star Trek fans talk about is who's their favorite captain. And it's really between Kirk, Picard, or, well, Kirk, because Kirk is also in the reboot series. This is probably not going to be too surprising, because to me, the best captain is James T. Kirk, played by William Shatner. I gotta say, like, I was never really a fan of Shatner before watching Star Trek. I never got his appeal. I thought, again, kind of corny, kind of uh, smarmy in a kind of way that I didn't enjoy. Watching him as Kirk in this entire series, I'm like, oh, okay, I get it now. Oh, he is really good. Charming, funny. Even though he is, I believe he's in his 50s when he's doing the movies, I still kind of believed him in the role. It was very interesting to watch him in this role, even though he's clearly a little too old for the role. I would say second is actually, again, Kirk, played by Chris Pine in the Kelvin Timeline movies. I think he takes the best parts of Kirk, played by Shatner, and then puts a youthful spin to it. And on top of that, he is very charming, and and I think his comedic timing is very good. So I definitely enjoyed him in those movies. And last is going to be Jean-Luc Picard, played by Patrick Stewart. I, I kind of see why some people do like him, but the movies don't do a great job of showing much of his character at all in, in these series so this is something if i start to see the tv series of star trek and i get into next generation this will be probably something i will look forward to checking out what that character is like now that we've got into the captains let's go into second in command the best of the three is spock played by zachary quinto which i think is the best of any character in any of the star trek movies the way that quinto played spock and how he is written in these films which makes him a much more likable and a much more dynamic character second place is gonna be spock played by leonard nimoy i do like nimoy as spock it's just that it seems like his performance is very one note at most times, but I, I definitely did enjoy it. Third is going to be Riker. I, man, uh, th this is going to be something you're going to notice with the Next Generation movies, and it's that I felt nothing for these characters, and I think that if you didn't have previous experience with these characters beforehand, you're not going to get much out of these. The third person that I, I thought I would talk about is like the best friend when it comes to the captain. And of course, the best friend when it comes to Kirk is Bones, Leonard Bones McCoy. To me, the best one is going to be DeForest Kelly in the original series. I think he's funny. He has a, a certain charm and surliness to him that I actually thought was enjoyable. Second is going to be Bones McCoy, played by Carl Urban. And I think that's because Carl Urban in the movies is not as big of a character in this movie. It seems like in the Kelvin timeline, it really is Kirk, Spock, and Ahura, which it's not a bad dynamic. It's actually pretty good. But I think that really devalues Bones in that sense. So here's the thing about The Next Generation. I really wasn't sure who the friend was. I always think it was probably going to be either Worf or it was going to be, I don't know, Data. And if it was Data, I would have been like, okay, so I would say Data would have been second. But then I decided to just look it up on Google. And I said, like, who is the best friend? Who is the person that Picard confides into and i find out it's beverly crusher played by gates mcfadden i had to remind myself who this person was because she is barely in any of the movies so when it came down to this i think she's last but again 
this is probably going to be the thing that you're going to notice throughout the entire time with the next generation movies is that the characters aren't really well defined in this and it really requires you to watch the series first as for the rest of the crew of the Starship Enterprise, I think the best one is the Kelvin timeline, which is the, the three reboot movies. The characters are much more well-defined. They have more depth to them. They are just much more interesting. I think Sulu and Ohora is actually given much better depth in the Kelvin timeline than the original series, and they're much better characters because of that. Second is the original series. I think the charm that the original series cast has makes them incredibly enjoyable. But third will be the next generation. And again, I'm just not going to get past that. Uh, I've said the reason why that is. So there's my thoughts on that. But each of the movies has a villain. And where are the best three villains? First, I would say number three is General Chang played by Christopher Plummer in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. I think his character is interesting. I don't think he's a really in-depth character, but I think he's a, as a character, he's one of the most interesting because of the deceptiveness that he uses in order to get back at the Star Trek Enterprise and Kirk. The second is going to be Nero, played by Eric Bana in the Star Trek reboot. I think that villain and what he does and how Bana plays him is just really well done. What this character does in that movie makes that timeline more interesting. And then first, of course, is going to be Khan, played by Ricardo Montalban in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. I mean, he, this is a classic villain. I think, honestly, Montalban played him incredibly well, and I think he is easily the most interesting and captivating villain of all the Star Trek movies. Let's get down to it. Let's get down to what are the best movies, what are the worst movies. First off, I think the third worst movie is Star Trek Generations. Even though I enjoyed it, I think it was kind of a weak film. Star Trek V The Final Frontier is the next one. I think the movie tried a buddy comedy style. It just overall didn't work. And then on top of that, it decided to change the entire tone in the third act, and it just felt really off. But the worst of the Star Trek movies is the first movie. And I gotta tell you, this is probably the, the worst way to start the series of films. I would say that if you're gonna do the Star Trek movies, skip the first one. Entirely skip it. Before I get to my top three, I want to say that uh, overall, I think the Next Generation movies are fine. But I think what makes these movies great are the characters and the in the charisma of those characters and the next generation movies just doesn't do a great job of showcasing them all right so let's get into my top three favorite star trek movies number three is star trek 60 undiscovered country great villain i think that the way that they cap off the series is really good and it's just a very fun and entertaining movie. It's got a lot of the same qualities that my number two favorite film has, which is Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Another one, great villain. And the emotional gut punch that happens at the end of the film cements this as probably one of the better films of the Star Trek series. And number one is the Star Trek reboot from 2009. Uh, I was actually surprised how much more I liked this movie. When I saw this originally as the first Star Trek anything I watched, I thought it was fun. I thought it was good. I didn't think it was all that amazing. I thought it was all right. I think this is the best because they not only stayed true to the characters as they are originally envisioned, but they added more depth to them and gave it a story that is much more interesting as well. And I think the next two movies didn't reach to what the reboot did, but I do look forward to see if they want to continue this timeline. Now, as to the rest of the films, I think they're all solid. Number four is the Star Trek III, The Search for Spock. I had some issues with that movie, but I thought it was good. Five is Star Trek Into Darkness, and six is Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. Overall, I think the best of the series is the original series, even though I think the Kelvin timeline is very good and has the best movie of the entire series. I think the original series is actually the best of them. I will say this, though. I do hope if they continue to have more Star Trek movies, they go back to the Kelvin timeline. I would like to see the cast older and see where they go forward with that. But if they decide to go elsewhere, I wouldn't be opposed to that either. Now, if you want my full review on this movie, you can go to my website at, at IamTheWiz.com. You'll have my full written review right on the site, along with a link to the video that has this review that you've just listened to. Thank you for listening to this review. If you want to know what we're reviewing in the next couple days, you can look on the screen right now to see what's coming up next. If you like what you heard, go ahead and leave a like on this video. If you want to discuss your opinion on the film or the review itself, please leave a comment. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the channel. Thank you again for listening. I will talk to you next time.